Yes, I have experienced the death of a friend. Yes, I have. Yes, I have recently. I've had a few that I've, I've lost. Yeah, I did experience a really bad death of a friend. I have a good friend who passed away when I was younger. My best friend went into the military and he went over to Afghanistan and he passed away. My junior year of high school, my friend committed suicide. My best friend, Jared, he actually died in a car accident. It's been hard, so I still think of him. So one of my um, sister's friends that I was kind of close to died a couple years ago in a football accident. Like. His heart stopped. It was hard for me seeing that he was my best friend and everything. Well, I just kind of dealt with it. I've been through it before with a closer family member. I went into a depression for a little bit. Like, I don't know, I was one of my good friends and I was like 11 years old, so it was really hard on me. I didn't talk to anybody for a week. I, um, I just sat in my room. I turned to like really bad stuff and drinking and just, I just sat there. I was devastated. He was like a brother. I just, talk to like my friends that were friends with him. A lot of my other friends helped me deal with like one of my best friends dying. I know if he was alive he'd be like live all you can like be happy. It was really upsetting but I went to his grave a lot and just talked to him and prayed. We had prayers and stuff a lot at school. Um, the funeral was very hard but we all we all keep close. We all talk to their family, make sure everything's okay. Having friends and family there to support you definitely helps, you know, try not to do it on your own, you know, and just believe that God has got a plan. We cried a lot, but um, we knew that he was in a better place. One of the more difficult things we can encounter in life is the loss of a loved one. Be it a family member, a close friend, mentor, or anyone we had a close, meaningful relationship with. These are times of deep mourning and we struggle to accept the painful reality of life without this person. In today's world, we are often challenged with losing a friend due to any number of circumstances. Each one bears its own burdens and difficulties. Sometimes, people take their lives in horrible acts of suicide. Sometimes random accidents occur that take the life of a friend or loved one. Cancer and other sicknesses claim the lives of many on Earth. We inevitably cry out and ask why. Too young to die, losing a friend. That's what we'll be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Carolee. And I'm Justin. And, and this, this is, is Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. The teens on the street all shared their experiences of losing someone close to them. We'll talk with them more in a few minutes, as well as meet our studio guests. But first, let's meet our spotlight guest, Danielle, who lost her close friend, Chris, when she was 13. My story with Chris is I was 13, he was 15. We just stayed really close. We were supposed to hang out and go for pizza with other friends. We got into a fight about something and I had gotten in trouble for it. My punishment was not being able to go. And that day was the last day for Chris. He had a job interview. He rollerbladed to his job interview. Every time he rollerbladed, we always told him, don't wear your, he your headphones and wear a helmet. On that day, no helmet, wearing headphones. He was rollerblading back to the restaurant we were all supposed to have met at. He got one foot up on the curb after crossing Route 9, which is a very busy highway. A car swerved picked his leg up, he rolled through the windshield, out the windshield, and the car rolled over him. Later on that night, I got woken up around two o'clock in the morning to my mother sitting on my bed. She told me, Danielle, there's been an accident. I'm like, with who? Well, Chris was in an accident. What do you mean Chris was in an accident? And I threw the blankets off me and I wanted to get up out of the bed and go to the hospital right away. She's like, Danielle, sit down. Danielle, he's not there. Oh, he's home, let's go to his house. Danielle, he's not there. And that's when I knew that he was gone. It's a really hard thing to accept when someone's gone. I'm losing a friend uh, myself. Um, when I first found out, it was just, I was also in just complete shock, and it was, it was really hard. I could imagine like how that would feel, just going through something like that, losing someone so close. Yeah. Well, let's see what our studio guests have to say about today's topic. Okay, they are Alina, Allie, Colleen, Danielle, Sarah, Abe, and Alex. Have you ever lost a close friend or relative? Two years ago, a friend of mine at school, they didn't know he was allergic to penicillin when they gave it to him and he went into a coma and he passed away. I know my, at the time, best friend's cousin who was around the age of like 19, he died in a car crash. And also in my school, a girl who was about like 13 was hit by a bus. My godbrother's um, mother had died when she was like in her early 20s. She was having open heart surgery and she, like it was fine, but then she caught like an infection from the hospital. Some years back, uh, 
my cousin Angela's husband's brother, Rubiel, uh, died in a car accident. And it really affected a lot of my older cousins to this day, like years later, whenever they see a picture of him or something to that effect, they get all choked up. Just the beginning of the summer, my cousin's uh, schoolmate suddenly died. She's only, I think, 13. And it was just heartbreaking because um, since it was in the summer, a lot of the friends didn't get to say like their last goodbyes or anything. They were just shocked. And a lot of the kids were like, oh, is that going to happen to me? So what was the most difficult part of losing a loved one? That's what we asked the teens on the street. Let's hear from them now. Realizing he was gone, it took me like, I'd say about half a year. That I grew up with him from kindergarten. I really miss him. That was the most hard part. He has a Facebook still, so like, I'll comment him, I have his number, I'll still text him and be like, I miss you and I know he's not going to answer. Seeing his family at the wake is what killed me. Going to his funeral was like, seeing his mom and his dad and everything. He was like a brother to me and my sisters, so it felt like I did lose part of my family. I had a friend that committed suicide, so just, it's like you think, what could I have done different or, you know, where, what went wrong. Emotionally, it takes a toll on you. The way he died, because he suffered a lot. What helped you the most to get through it? My friend, he wouldn't want me to be here crying about him. He'd want me to go out and like be happy about him. Like. That's what I do. I just try to think of him every time. Like, I pray for him every night. Like, my friends and his friends were very supportive. My friends and my church. My mom helped me the most getting through it. And my friends and family. Friends and family kind of, we were there for each other. Family and friends. It was good to know, like, when I got upset that they were there. Knowing that he wasn't in pain anymore. What have you learned about the grieving process, either from going through it yourself or experiencing it from someone else? I've learned it's definitely not easy. And Second grade, my little brother had died. I didn't actually know how to grieve. It was kind of like just like crying spontaneously. So it was definitely not easy to learn how to grieve. It's like the teen, teen on the streets uh, said that you really need someone there. Like when you have someone there, it's just more comforting. It's easier if you talk about it more than keeping it bottled up. When my friend Dan died and I know someone who was even closer with them, they, called, they were best friends and she kept it bottled up for a long time and only till recently did she actually start talking about it. You really need that support system and just know that you can talk about it. I lost one of my close friends. Just going to like, you know, see her, her, her parents calms me down and um, <clears throat> just going back to her house and just reminiscing over memories just kind of cheers me up and just to be able to be there for her family because they were like family to me. Counselors, priests, and psychologists have put together what is called the five stages of grieving. While we all may experience grief differently, these stages are helpful to understand our many thoughts and feelings. The first is denial and isolation. We may deny the truth because it is so shocking and turn away from friends and family. The second is anger. You may experience anger at God, yourself, or even the people responsible, if there are any. The third is bargaining. Hoping you can postpone or delay death by asking God for one more time. The fourth is depression. Feelings of numbness, hopelessness, and loneliness. The fifth and final stage is acceptance. Where you are able to look beyond the loss, holding the memory of the person near to your heart. Let's go back to Danielle, where she'll talk to us about her experience in dealing with some of these stages. Let's see what she has to say. I was angry at the world. I was angry at God for taking my friend, at Chris for not wearing a helmet, angry at myself for not apologizing. I did go through some denial. No, he can't be gone. I just talked to him today. I don't understand. I did kind of shut the world out for a good three or four days, didn't talk, didn't eat, didn't sleep. I went through a bout with the depression. I took a lot of it out on other people. I took dance classes. I got in my own little zone. I let my feet do everything. I didn't have to think about Chris. I didn't have to think about school or anything else or any of the other people I was trying to please by trying to act okay. My anger was just so pent up that I would just throw all my tap shoes even in between classes and go into an empty room and just stomp, just get it out. It was almost therapeutic at the time. The most difficult part to get through with losing Chris was the missing him. Even now, it's 15 years, I still miss him. It sounds like she almost went through like every stage of the grieving process, and I could only imagine how hard that was for her. When I go through the grieving process, the first thing usually is isolation. I kind of want to keep it to myself at first. After that, it goes through a short depression. After a while of that, you kind of just accept it. And that's how it usually goes for me. 
it's definitely first denial. And then like I just go through like this whole depressive state where I just want to be locked in my room, like hidden under the covers away from the world and then definitely angry and guilty. For me, when Dan died, me and my friend kind of went through the same thing. We were in denial first, like we couldn't believe it. It was just like a week of straight, just like numbness. And then when it did hit us, it was more like isolation. Like I didn't want to eat anything. I just wanted to stay in my room and do nothing. When we had a death in my family, I watched my brother go through all the processes. He went through all the anger and sadness, but I don't know where I am. I know I'm not like accepting of the death yet, but I know that I will be. You know, I'm the youngest and you know, everyone around me was like grieving and I just kind of felt like I should be the strongest. And it was kind of hard and I still don't accept it. Well, when I first found out that my friend Brittany had passed away, this, this was all just sudden. She was in the hospital and um, they were trying to figure out why she, why she couldn't breathe. I went to bed, you know, praying, God, please, you know, hope she's okay, hope she makes out of this okay. And in the morning, my mom came into my room and she said that she didn't make it. And I started to cry, I just burst out into tears, you know, how could this happen to my best friend? I've known her since third grade, she's like family to me. And it was really hard. I was in shock, denial. How could this happen to my best friend? I didn't like to be alone. Some people like to isolate themselves. I wanted to just be out with my friends, out of my house, just the memories with her in my house. I don't want to be around that. I just wanted to just get out, have my friends be there and comfort me. And that's what really helped me get through it. And especially just, you know, reminiscing over good memories. And that's what kind of just keeps me going, just remembering the good times that we had together. The grieving process allows us to see there is a progression towards healing. One thing that is important in grieving is the need to be patient with ourselves. We need to allow ourselves to ask those difficult questions. Some of these questions may be, why did my friend die so young? Or why did God allow this to happen? In these moments, we can turn to God and walk with him in our grief or turn away from him. Next, the teens on the street discuss if they were ever angry with God over the death of a loved one. Let's hear from them now. And I don't want to necessarily say I was mad at God, but I was mad that she was taken from me. But I got past that, and like it was just, I think it's all part of the grieving process. I was furious at first. I was like, why are you doing this to me? These people are good people. Why, why are they dead? Like, they don't deserve to be dead. And then it was just like, you know what? He has a reason for everything. And if, he, if they're dead, they're on to better things. No, I was not angry with God. Things happen for a reason. I wasn't angry, I was just really hurt. At first you're angry because you wonder why he would take such a young person and take their life and he was such a good person. But then I realized, you know, things happen and whatever happens, you're gonna have to get over it. I did think it was unfair because he was just such a great person. I wasn't angry with him, more so upset that he didn't save him. I wanted him to, you know, be here, but like you said, it was his time to go and I understand that. Has the loss changed your relationship with God or your faith? No, I think it's made it stronger because now I feel like she's watching over me. She's my guardian angel and I could talk to her whenever I want. I could talk through, to her through God. It's made me closer, if anything. It, at first it was hard. It was hard to get over the fact that he's died. Like it hurt me. I was heartbroken for so long. I think it made me stronger. I'm able to talk to him more now and read more and realize that things happen. I can't stop it. and. He's not trying to hurt me. When it happened, I realized that I need to definitely pray more, go to church more. At first, it's really hard to come to like the terms, like why it happened. Like I know me personally, I asked God, like why would you do this to this person? Like they didn't deserve to die. And like from the beginning, we're all, I know at least I was told, God has a plan. Why would he put that in his plan? And why would he make us go through that and that person go through their hardship and that it wasn't fair? I think that for me, I think it helped strengthen my relationship with God only because I knew that Dan was going to be in a better place. I knew that God was going to help him through that and that I can always count on God if I ever need him for anything, any kind of strength. I wasn't angry with God. Um, I knew that, like you said, she's in a better place and it definitely brought me closer to God and to my faith. Death can serve as a reminder that we were not made for this world but made for union with God in the next. Next, Danielle talks to us about her relationship with God during this time changed from anger to hope. And shares some of her hopes for heaven. There was absolutely a time 
When I was angry at God, I was angry because he didn't even get a chance to live his life. He didn't get a chance to go to prom. He didn't get a chance to drive a car. Taking that away from him, I thought he was cheated, and I thought God cheated him. I would literally lock myself in my bedroom. I would have conversations with God. I would just sit there and, and tell him exactly how I felt. It helped because it got a lot of the frustration off my chest. It helped me get over the anger. It helped me cope with the fact that he was gone, release the pent up feelings that I had. So I guess my way of praying and just talking my feelings out with God helped. I do believe in heaven. I do believe that someday we'll be able to catch up. The thing that helped me most through the loss was I'd say a good 90% of all Sundays. I'd wind up going with my mom to the 10 o'clock mass. We'd never plan it. We'd never say, I'll see you next week. We would uh, wind up being there with my friend's mom. And she'd sit next to me and for that one hour a week, she'd hold my hand. Whatever it was that, you know, whether it was a pre um, the priest or the deacon saying, that just, with her sitting there, got through to me. It just, believing, helped me. What are your hopes for heaven and those who have died at such young ages? Well, I hope that in heaven they find peace and comfort. When they go there, we know that it wasn't the end of their life, it was the beginning of their life there. I just hope that Dan right now, he's in a peaceful place, almost that he's helping us accept the fact that he died and that it's okay that he's passed away at this point and that one day I'll hopefully see him again. I definitely hope that they're happy and they're safe and that can find peace in heaven finally. Yeah. I just imagine one day when I see my friends there, they're going to be like a hundred times happier than I ever saw them. Even though man's nature is mortal, God has destined him not to die. Death was therefore contrary to the plans of God, the Creator, and entered the world as a consequence of sin. However, death is not the end. As we read in St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has redeemed our suffering and because of him we have hope that the life of our loved one did not end in death. We put our hopes that he or she is in heaven with Christ. This is the true reality that we can cling to even in times of intense grief. So with this hope, let's go back to the teens on the street where they'll share some advice for those who are struggling with grief. Let's check it out. Your friends and your family are gonna always be there and. It, it may be hard right now. Stay positive. Um, have your friends and family there. Don't try to go at it by yourself. Don't put all the guilt on your shoulders because it wasn't your fault. Just always have hope. Like, don't give up. They wouldn't want you to really cry about them. They want you to remember all the happy times that you had with them. Pray to God and see what life throws at you. Just be strong, you know, try to help the family be there. How much of a role did your faith play in helping you to get through it? A lot. God, I prayed a lot. Faith definitely helped me because we prayed that, you know, the rest of the family was going to be okay, that they'd get through it, and they did. I always believed that, you know, like, if there's something out there greater, then that she'd be taken care of because she was a really good person. He was in so much pain, you know, I know God basically just took him. He wasn't meant to be here anymore. It was his time to go. My faith played a, a big role in it. Um, I got down and my friends just reminded me like, you know, everything happens for a reason. It takes time and I hated hearing that, but it's true. Time heals all and I mean, it's been a year and a half and I'm still hurting, but it's gonna, it's getting better and better every day. You know, I think the one thing we can all remember when losing a loved one or anyone that's close to us is to always remember them as they live their life. Like it's okay to you know shed a tear, it's okay to cry about it because that's only human to do that, but remember them for who they were. At school when Dan died, uh, we had a lot of memorial things. People made bracelets for him. Um, we wore black on the day that he died, or the day after, and one of the big things I remember at the time we were sophomores, all the sophomores went to the gym and we all held hands and prayed the Hail Mary. That was a big thing for me because everybody was just crying during it and realizing that he was actually dead, we all just banded together and we became a family. The class of 2012 became a family during that day and we all just hugged each other and like there was no like criticism, no judging going on. We all just realized how much we missed him and I really think that's such like a great way to even like get out any grief or sorrow that you're feeling. I agree that memorials can be really helpful. 
I know when one of my classmates was hit by a bus, um, one of her things was to always wear these uh, plastic pearl beads. And so the next day we all wore them in memory of her. And it really helped comfort like her loved ones because it showed that we were all there for her and we cared and that we're never gonna forget her. Actually, my brother Justin wrote a song and um, singing it kind of helps me remember her and it helps me kind of let go of, like, it doesn't let go of the memory, but it let go of how much pain I feel like when I think of her. We're actually gonna be hearing your song a little bit later in the show and I'm really excited to hear it. Thank you. It is very important to put our grief into positive actions. Some other ways we can do this is by writing poems, joining a support group online or in our town. Spending time in nature, going for a hike to the beach or somewhere else beautiful. Or even going to Eucharistic adoration and being with the Lord. Finally, Danielle shares some of her own advice for those mourning the death of a friend. And if we are not directly impacted by the death, how we can provide comfort to those who are grieving. Don't blame yourself. In most cases, there is absolutely not one thing you could have said or done differently to make anything go different for that person. It may seem like the end of the world. It may hurt worse than any pain you've ever felt. It doesn't ever go away. It does get easier. If you are a friend of someone that lost someone, the main thing that you can do is be their shoulder to cry on. Tell people how you feel too. You know, I'm really sorry for your loss. That validates their feelings. Take your friend out just to get their mind off of things. Get their mind off of it for at least five minutes because that can just bring some relief. Again, being that shoulder to lean on, that person that picks you up and just listens. Don't have to say a word. You don't have to give advice. A hug goes a very long way. Sometimes you need to cry. My senior Sean Flynn, who is one of my dear friends, used to tell me crying cleanses the soul. So sometimes you need a good cry. <laughs> Losing a close friend is not an easy burden to bear. The process of grieving is one that we all go through. You may need to reach out for help to a professional or mentor so you have someone to talk through, through your feelings with. During a loss, it's important to cling to the truth about God's presence in our lives. There are many scripture verses that talk about sorrow, which may be comforting in the months of grieving. It may also be helpful to organize some sort of memorial for your friend. However, your grieving and questioning turns out, know the Lord is near and He truly can work all things to be good. So have you found strength in God when mourning the death of a young person? We'd like to hear your story. Contact us at realfaithtv.com. Or share your thoughts with us on Twitter. And we'll leave you today with the music video for Let Me Go, the song we spoke about, which I wrote and performed with my sister Alina in memory of my best friend Brittany. Writing this song was one way that helped me deal with her loss. Hope in some way it might help those of you who have lost a loved one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless. Sunk in my eyes, open wide as the news just came to me. It sunk in as my eyes grew thin as I cried, cried, cried. Let me go.
Embrace me, but let me go. I sit and cry in a darkened room. I walk alone, cause there's no one left inside of me. You will always live with this film inside my head. Erase these lines and these ending scenes. This role not film. I sit here crying, oh my friend Scattered memories, the touch of your embrace Your heart filled life with a smile upon your face Is this goodbye or tell